Good evening, everybody. Dr. Glow here with Black Girl Everything. I am here. Happy May, everybody. We're in the spring. Supposedly, it's fake spring in New York right now. And I have the beautiful Seychelles with me today. So wait a minute. And you cussed me out for saying it the easy way, and you said it the easy way. That's not OMG! <laughs> did I really? You did. <laughs> All right. So what is it? Say it again. Seychelles. Seychelles. There you All go. right, so show, so show, so show, so show. I'm named after the islands. Oh, the Seychelles Islands? Yes, Where right on the Madagascar, sits right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. I didn't know that. I tell everyone, Google me. <laughs> Yo, you should, because that's like yeah, super dope, because I knew nothing about that whatsoever. Now I got to look that up. I'm going to make my kids learn about it at school, because I know they don't know either. It's a beautiful island. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, so my dad made me learn the history of the island when I was really young. Like he sent away and bought the currency, the history of the island. I got pictures and everything. Um, the capital is Victoria. It's made up of 13 archipelagos. Uh, it's still a French colony. And oh right now God. it is the honeymoon destination of the world. Like a one-way ticket is like four grand. I am high priced. I have clothes and I have shoes and I can't wait to go because that is on my bucket list because I can't wait to hand my passport over and say, hey, it's me. You know, the person <laughs> paid me my reparations. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Well, that sounds really dope, but a flight like four grand. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's, it's high priced. All right. So I'm going to go inside and get my private jet like next year. Okay. I'm down. And then I'm going to call you and I'll let you know. As soon as I get that jet, me and you is off. Listen, and I'm going to say, the the queen is here. <laughs> the queen is here. That is so dope. That's an interesting story behind your name, though. So what made your father name you that? So it has something to do with my great-great-grandfather. I have no clue what it is, but okay. like my mom said, he, he was adamant that was going to be my name. It is what it is. Right? It's a beautiful name, and it's Thank so you. unique. I hear that all the time. And to me, it's just like so regular. So it's so funny because there is another Seychelle. So one Seychelle reached out to me because there's two spellings to the name okay. there, and it's two pronunciations. So one is Seychelle and the other mm -hmm. is Seychelloi. So my name ends in ES, like after the islands, but the Seychelloi ends in O-I-S. So uh -huh. It's funny because the other day I was scrolling Facebook and a Seychelle Dooley, which is my married last name, popped up in Jamaica and my family roots is Jamaican. And I so I shared it on Facebook and I was like, look, y'all, they go to other Seychelles. <laughs> 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 but she's a renowned soccer player out of Jamaica. And I'm just like, that's dope. So wow. Really, all of us that possess the name, we're some special characters. All right. I give you that. I give you that. That is dope. So I'm so excited to have you on today, especially in this moment of healing and peace within a month of May, because it's definitely mental health uh, month, and just personal space and self-care, right? That's what I really want to focus on is my, about self-care, even my own individual self-care. So let's start with talking about what is the name of your business? Which one? <laughs> so All right, go ahead, just listen. <laughs> so the self-care business is I am Seychelles. Like I dot com my own name. Got it. Um, it's funny because my main business, which is I Hill SX and I Hill CBD, they used to be one company, but because mm -hmm. of the nature of both businesses and for marketing purposes, I had to separate the brands, even though it pained me to do it because everyone knew me under one roof. Yeah, but how everything is like synergetically coming together. It's just like one begets one begets one. So I Hill Essex originally started off as CBD. Mm -hmm. And what made me unique within the CBD community is because I recommended dosages to girls that were going for cosmetic surgery. I gave them an alternative to narcotics. Oh. So you want to get through surgery, you want to get on that table safely and come home and not possibly OD because the big thing in the surgery community is a lot of girls bring, especially if they're going out of the country. So the three main hub spots for plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery is Miami, Colombia, Dominican Republic. Yep. When you go to Colombia and Dominican Republic, you're there for anywhere between 15 to 30 days. 
Really? They don't, tell, yeah, they don't tell you that because one, especially now with the influx and in deaths, like literally we're in the middle of high time for cosmetic surgery. Everybody t income tax time is the worst time to go. That's yeah. when everybody wants to go get their butt, their breast, something done, their teeth, whatever. Um, and with, with these girls, when they're going out of the country, because they only get something like a Tylenol, maybe a Tylenol PM prescribed to them, they bring their own narcotics. Now, what they're not telling the doctors is that they're taking something and a lot of these girl pop pills, you know, the mm -hmm. opioid epidemic is high. Yeah. It, deaths happen every day in the surgery community, like literally every day. Like one girl just made the news, maybe I want to say Friday. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, the surgery community gets it before the news gets it. So this mm -hmm. girl has been dead already two weeks before the news even picked up on her. Wow. Um, and it's like a, it's a, one of those secret societies that's not really so secret anymore. Because mm -hmm. at one point, if only you were going for surgery, you would know to go look for certain things within the community. Yeah. Long story short, I got tired of seeing girls. OD. I got tired of seeing girls going to these unscrupulous doctors. And the problem is, like I said, they pop a pill and then they don't know what the anesthesiologist is giving them. It has yeah. a reaction and a lot of them are dying from asphyxiation and they can't figure out why. So when CBD fell into my lap and I really like studied CBD and understood what CBD, CBD does for the body, I was able to come up with kind of like my own formula, depending on your pain level, on how to consume CBD for your pain level for cosmetic surgery. Now, cosmetic surgery is not no everyday, it's not no mm -mm. It's outpatient, but the recovery is harsh, especially for like tummy tuck patients. The girls that go get their butt done, their recovery time is two weeks max. They're back to work. A tummy tuck or a mommy makeover patient might not see work for another three weeks to a month. So mm. think of the time that she's out for the procedure and then you have to incorporate in recovery time. And then a lot of these girls push their bodies beyond points that they're not supposed to. But long story short, it started with that. Then I'm like, okay, I'm a studying naturopathic student. And I was thinking of ways like, how can I really affect the community in a positive way? So then I got into learning, well, t educating the girls on how to use natural products to prepare their bodies. The problem is- okay. A lot of them want, all right, a lot of them know they're going to get their income tax January, February. They want to be it. on the table by the end of February, March. Mm -hmm. Now, you knew this a year ago, right? <laughs> you prepared for really? the upcoming income tax, but you want to wait three months before to get your iron level up, to get your magnesium levels up, to a lot of them cheat their bodies to the point where it's detrimental in the end. So a lot of girls figure out ways how to take some natural supplements, mm -hmm. but in, in essence, like I said, they're tricking the body because they get their levels to the point to pass the labs, but it does not necessarily mean their that level of body is mm -hmm. where it needs to be to actually have that surgery. Got it. So that's how I Heal SX was born. Then when I separated, I Heal SX just kept the beauty and health side and the surgery side and I Heal CBD became I Heal CBD. Then you have I Am Say Show, which is my Reiki practice, self-care, uh, you know, healing. It's basically energy healing. Gotcha. Um, the Indians call it Kundalini energy. The Chinese call it Chi energy. Mm -hmm. Here are my little handy dandy tapestry. I love to describe the chakras. We all have these chakras within our bodies. Root, mm -hmm. sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown, right? All of these different things that you see flowing are called meridians within the body where we store energy, whether suppressed uh, emotions, depending on who you have around you, what energy you're picking up off of them. Because some people are natural empaths and don't know, so they don't understand why when they're in a group of people, they feel so unsettled is because they don't realize they're absorbing six to seven other people's energies. Woo! So... Couple all of that. 
then you have your hip area. You ever feel like you got a shooting pain going up your back and you just don't know where it came from Mm -hmm. or have lower to mid back pain? That's indicative that you have too much emotion sitting here because we store our emotions in our hips. Now, how does all of this come together? I didn't understand it when it started happening, but I just went with what felt good. I go with what feels good for me. So I already had the two companies. I became a Reiki practitioner and I'm just like, okay, I sell products that actually helps my clients on the Reiki side. And I also have clients on the Reiki side that might enjoy things that I have on this side because yeah. I would say a girl might come to me for healing, but she might have a BBL scheduled next month. Listen, <laughs> mm-hmm. so it's just like, when you look at all three components, Reiki to beauty and health supplements, and CBD, they all synergetically work together because eventually, as you start a healing process, there's a lot of things that we suppress and there's a lot of emotions that we don't deal with. As we start to heal and we start to clean out our proverbial closets, you have to understand your body, your, they say you kill the mind, you kill the body, right? Mm-hmm. You kill the body, you kill the mind. Same same instance. So what you what you consume, the things you expose yourself to, the energy and people you expose yourself to, all of that works all in one with when it comes to Reiki and healing. CBD for people that deal with anxiety, chronic pains, things of that nature. I want to get everyone away from Big Pharma and back to Mm -hmm. nature resources. And that's my biggest goal is showing you how to live a sustainable life. When you look at the Mediterranean people and their mortality rate, when you look at Caribbean people and their mortality rate, they're outliving the young people. Yeah, And it's because of our lifestyles. We've become so accustomed to electronics, just being on the go, not being present anymore. No, we don't even know how to be social anymore. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see, pay attention to even, even the youth. The youth right now, we have a lot of angry young kids. And these oh kids act like they have the world on their shoulder. And you be like, well, damn, when you 18, how you going to feel? <laughs> like, if this is hard. And mm-hmm. they, But the thing about it, they're going through so much internal battles. Because why? They watch their parents suffer in silence. And what are they doing? suffering in silence. Honestly, I wish Reiki could come to the schools because it's a great technique and a great modality for children to learn to understand and interpret their emotions. Everything that we, you and I once knew from a childhood, these kids don't even have a clue of. So it's just like, it's just about making a person whole again. We're not whole. We're just little robots running around right now. And electronics is running our youth. Electronics mm-hmm. are running a lot of adults. Yeah, I'm showing. I'm here. My purpose in life is to show you you have a gift that you've been sitting on, and it's time for you to heal so you can learn how to use that gift and move forward in life and understand what your passion is, understand what your purpose is. And a lot of people don't know what their purpose is. That was a mouthful. that was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> You just went like my Wednesday takeover straight. That these things Wednesday takeovers where people come onto the page and they kind of take over and just go over and talk about their business. You just did one of those for like eight minutes. Like literally. I'm sorry. Listen, I'm passionate about what I do. So it's like to educate and to let people know I can uh-huh. talk about it all day. <laughs> no, I see that. But it was so much information, so much information. Definitely cool, definitely cool. So I think what you honestly just did was enlighten me about the whole surgery aspect and about how many people, I've heard of people who come back to the States and had these types of surgeries and their bodies just don't heal correctly, right? They think, oh, it looks great in the mirror while I'm out there. Then they come over there, things are lopsided or they come back and they get major infections, and stuff like that. So let's talk a little bit more about your actual products and some of the benefits that exist within them, not just for people who are going through these surgery processes, but also for little pe- people who maybe had a car accident and they've, they they're dealing with some slip discs or have back pain or um, whatever else your stuff can heal. Talk about it. All right. So I'll start with CBD. I only have one bottle on me right now now but i have a line a cbd line black mm-hmm. owned um we started off believe it or not with one type which was relief relief okay. was um this isn't even relief this is calm but we started off with relief relief 
is for those that experience chronic pains, those that might have a slit disc, those that might suffer from sciatica or something like that, or back pain, depending on what it is, relief because of the added terpenes. So CBD, knowing what CBD is and how it um, reacts in the body is knowing your body. So we have what's yeah. called endocrine, um, an endo, oh my God, it's like on the tip of my tongue and I always get it mixed up. Ah, I got to Google it because it's like, I'm going to say the wrong word and I don't because it's so close to the endocrine system, but it's not that. We have what's in the body called a cannabinoid receptor. Okay. And depending on how your CBD is formulated. So for me, there's certain terpenes which are added cannabinoids and flavors that can go into CBD to help with whatever you're, you're using it for. So for instance, I have relief, I have lucid, I have calm. Relief is for pain. Calm is for people, for um, those that feel anxiety, a little bit depression, or they always feel like they're on edge. This will help to level the dopamine and serotonin levels in the body. Um, mm -hmm. We have lucid, which is for those that's looking for a little bit more focus. Now with relief, I have extra cannabinoids added that acts as a muscle relaxant, that acts as an anti, it acts it has an antibacterial and antifungal component to it. And what it does is it attaches to the receptors in our body. Mm -hmm. We have a T1 and a T2 receptor. Uh, this system that I cannot remember the name for, the, but it starts with the E and I'm going to get it before we get off. The T1 and the T2 receptor connects to that. Now, that particular system, we have a central nervous system that we know. Whenever anything in our body is going awry, the central nervous system will send a signal to the brain telling you about that one thing that's going on, even though you mm -hmm. might be feeling three different pains. This other system that I'm talking about will send a signal to all the receptors to say to the brain to say, hey, this area has a problem, this area has a problem, this area has a problem, this area has a problem. Now, when you take a pharmaceutical drug, that pharmaceutical drug does what? It only treats one thing. And nine times out of 10, it's adversely affecting something else. Mm, long-term okay. use of Tylenol, perfect example. Long-term use of Tylenol affects the liver, but Tylenol is what everybody goes to when they have a headache or they have a sprain or they have something like that. And they don't realize every time they pop that Tylenol, it's helping that one thing, but over time you're killing your liver. With, the, uh, with CBD and the receptors, CBD has no side effects, has no contraindicate. Well, I'm not going to say it doesn't have any contraindications, but the contraindications are very low when it comes to, what's the word I'm looking for? When it comes to affecting anything else in the body. Okay. So see, like I said, you take Tylenol, Tylenol is going to going to go to the one thing that you took it for, that headache. Mm -hmm. You take CBD and you have a headache, you have a sprain and your back is hurting you. CBD is going to hit all of those receptors and work at once and not affect anything in the long run. Mm -hmm. Very interesting information. Yeah, it, well, let me tell you something. It, you have to, I'm gonna be honest, it can get boring listening to CBD because I'm probably losing a few people because they're like, I don't know what the hell she's talking about. But if you have a science background and you know your body and you know the body, uh -huh. it will be, it, it would make more sense. But again, it gets, it gets to knowing your body and know what works for your body because CBD is not for everybody, especially mm -hmm. people who have a low tolerance, especially that has never consumed a drug. You have some people that smoke hella weed. For those that smoke weed, I have to tell them, you actually have to detox because the problem is CBD and THC is made from the same hemp plant. The brain can't discern which one you're consuming if, you're, if you have a high concentration of one and not enough of the other. So Got when it. you start consuming CBD after you smoke THC, the brain is looking for the high. It's not realizing I didn't take THC, but it recognizes yeah. that hemp component, component within the body. So you see, yeah, it gets deep. <laughs> yeah, it gets really, really deep. 
really, really deep. So how do you utilize all this when it comes to your Reiki process? How does that work? So with Reiki, um, not so much the CBD. Like I haven't had any clients that utilize CBD with Reiki, but I have had clients that work that come more towards on the I Heal SX side, the okay. herbal portion. So we have our own line of uh, supplements. We have a 15 day cleanse. We have our own probiotic and we have our own multivitamin. And we're looking to add other minerals onto the, um, onto the catalog very soon. What a lot of people don't know, um, again, with health, you kill the mind, you kill the body, you kill the body, yeah. you kill the mind. There are certain deficiencies um, minority and people of color have that mm -hmm. are very high that contributes to disease. Yep. So for instance, magnesium, zinc, and iodine are three minerals that are really, uh, I want to say pivotal to keep the body and the digestive tract working. Those minerals, especially magnesium, are deficient in a lot of people. Iodine is what helps contribute to your vitamin D3 and how you absorb your vitamin D3 and how it breaks down into the body. Iodine uh -huh. is another thing that's very deficient in black and brown people. Okay. We have this myth because it's printed on the salt bottle that, oh, consuming salt with iodine will give you your daily nutritional value. That's a whole lie. <laughs> a whole lie. You got to learn how to debunk and read your labels. Dope sick. There's a movie out there called Dope Sick. It's about the Sackler family who, um, no. yeah. I watched that. Okay. That was some seriousness. Okay. And it was legalized drug, drug trafficking. That's all it was. Clearly. They were the biggest drug dealers alive out here. Now. Up the dosage, up the dosage, up the dosage. Fun fact. Pay attention to how they had the FDA in their pockets. And that pay -to play mentality is what's running rampant in the United States today. So a lot of the labels that we read that's quote unquote approved by the FDA is not to be trusted because the Sackler showed you how easy it is to pay off and grab somebody from the FDA real quick. Yeah. And they show you how they manipulate the labels because look how long they manipulated the information when it came to OxyContin before somebody, before those doctors got involved and they started really digging. Same thing with the food labels. Pay attention to the foods that's illegal or banned in other countries, but it's very much legal here or had and mm -hmm. has known to know has been known to have carcinogens in them. Yeah. So to answer your question more on the herbal side because i have a like i have a, a line of herbal teas as well one fights inflammation and that's more so for the surgery girls okay. um, for anybody that just retains water i have an immunity blend and i also have a respiratory blend and i'm going to be looking to add to those as well because i'm looking to add also a candidia blend a lot of people don't realize how much candidia overflow they have in their body women What's that candidia so candida is the overgrowth of yeast in, in, in your body. So if you're a person that drinks a lot of beer or you consume wine or any type of liqueur, um, breads, starches, things like that, remember starch breaks down to yeast, yeast breaks down to sugar. I brought you to school tonight and you the teacher. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> so what is this tea? What is the purpose of this tea that you're that I need to start drinking like tomorrow? Tell me all about it. So the candida tea, I'm not done researching all of the herbs that I want to include in it because there's okay. certain things, there's certain herbs, and then you have to know the herbs. You want to make, you want to pick herbs to where if people have underlying health problems, those herbs don't contraindicate with that health problem. Yeah. For instance. Uber Ursi is a, a one of the herbs that I use in my immunity tea. But mm -hmm. Uber Ursi is not good for anybody that has kidney problems. Okay. So it's just about researching and finding something within a broad spectrum that everybody can enjoy rather than making it person specific, if that makes sense. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense because you want to be able to defeat, well, deal with or heal the masses versus just a particular population. Correct. I understand that. Definitely understand that. So how can people actually find your products? It seems like there's so much, because I know I met you at that one little pop-up and it was very loud. So I know we spoke, but the amount of information you're giving me right now, I'm like, I don't even know you. <laughs> so the pop-up <laughs> is to bring you, is to it was to draw you to me. So right now, 
this is what you saw me with, which was our my signature CBD and hemp infused skincare line. Yes. You can find this on the website or on Instagram at iHillSX, www.iheal, S is in Sam, X is in xylophone.com. And all it's all by by category. So I have a beauty and health section, I have a health apothecary, and then I have the herbal teas. And I have soaps, but I'm just like, I got to scale down now. Like it's just too much going on and I'm just running out of time. And mm -hmm. I handcraft everything. So even down to the only thing is even with the CBD. So the only thing that I source and I've sourced from the same supplier since I got into the CBD game, like I can mm -hmm. use all of my certificate of analysis, which is third-party testing that shows you how much CBD and how much THC is in each batch, um, yeah. in each bottle. It certifies that that is what's in there and that I'm below the state minimum required level because you have to be at below 0.03% to be considered CBD. Anything above that is going to be considered a CBD and THC blend, requires a whole uh -huh. other set of licenses at that. So... I, I make everything in-house, all my products. I work with the chemist very closely. I monitor the Prop 65 list to make sure that every ingredient is, in, is exactly what it says. It's natural. And if it pops up on the Prop 65 list, that means it has a cancerous effect or a cancer agent, and I pull it immediately. So there's a lot that goes into the products. And I'm sorry. My husband, I left my husband watching dinner, so I just got to make sure he didn't burn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm finding is that you're very smart. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. I knew it was cool. Like when I met you, you started sharing some stuff with me. I thought, this is dope. She's kind of dope. I don't know about my, now I'm saying it's like, oh my goodness. All the information I could actually learn from you. I don't think I love have her. some real concrete information to share that's actually beneficial to people. More than just, oh, I have some products out of black owned. You're, 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 so, you're past that. <laughs> and I need you to own how far past you are at that point because you're talking about the overall influence your products has on society and health and community within what you're doing. If I could just get people to understand that, but everybody is just like, it's frustrating because for instance, I have, like I said, I have a 15-day cleanse. The 15-day cleanse cleans you from the rooter to the tutor. And I have testimonials. I have pictures. People just don't want to be healthy. They want a quick fix. And it's like, yeah. you ever see that meme where it's the guy selling snake oil and then the person says, I don't have snake oil for sale. And she may have one or two customers, but the guy selling snake oil has the line around the corner. Exactly. That's the society we live in. So to tell you the gratitude I feel right now to just be able to use your platform just to tell people like, listen, I don't have to sell my products. I just want to educate you on how we can really live longer, how we can really be at our best. Again, full circle, how this conversation started, self-care. A part of self-care that our mothers and our fathers didn't show us was taking care of themselves. We watched them work themselves into the ground to the yeah. point where mentally they were exhausted, physically their bodies gave out. And the one thing, I watched my mom do it. Like my mom was a single mom who raised three kids in one mm -hmm. of the most prominent neighborhoods of Trenton, New Jersey. And from Trenton? So I was born in Trenton, but I was raised in Brooklyn. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Trenton's an interesting place. Very, very. And if you had to deal with the school system, I'm ready to strangle whoever the current mayor is. It's just like, it's like East Side High. It's like watching Lean On Me all over again. And The whole city. Of, it's like Lean On Me City. Th there you go. There you go. And to watch my mom, it's like, I, I, I did not want to be that person that gave their self to a job for 55 years and then I collapsed five years later because my body is so worn down it's yeah. time to change that narrative like we can do what we love and look good doing it and feel good doing it but mm -hmm. it's changing a mindset and that's the biggest part no I'm all for that I made it I made a declaration last week that I'm officially going down to a four-day work 
work week as of okay. January, 2023. Like, I don't even care. Like I'm only working four days a week and I'm limiting my hours. Like my Monday, Tuesday, Thursday will be my big days, but Thursday will kind of be like, ah, and Friday, I'm just not working. Friday, Saturday, Sunday will be my new days off forever. And then every single year after that, I'm going to be reducing a day. So by the time I'm 45, my work day goes down to one day a week because I just don't, I'm not in a space where I want to keep giving up all my time. Yeah. I don't want to give up all my time. I love my businesses. My businesses are growing. They're flourishing. Everything's great, but I'm building an empire to the position where I'm going to be financially secure. I'm going to be doing what I want to do within my purpose, but I don't have to be the one doing the work all the time. Work and I'm, I'm not going to be that person. I'm not that CEO. That's not me. Mm -hmm. No, that's not me whatsoever. I want to be the person who's going to be able to bring snacks to my daughter's kindergarten classroom and oh, sit there and volunteer. I'm going to be that dude. But I know <laughs> in the back end, my businesses are running themselves. Listen, and that's what it's about. Like, my thing is, when you look at every other culture, they know how to work together. Regardless yeah. of who doesn't like who, they know how to work together. They know how to get to the bag. For some reason, we just can't get it. And that's because we have so much power within us that we just haven't tapped into. Mm -hmm. But you can't tap into that power, which is that higher power up there, that crown chakra, where you get your spiritual guidance from. You can't tap into that if there's lower. Now, what I forgot to tell you earlier, heart and root, two of the most important chakras. Why? Because the heart is your pathway from your physical, which is your root, your sacral, your solar, to the spiritual, your throat, your third eye, your crown. You can't get that guidance if the if the vessel is weak. And that's what we are. That's what we are here on this time and space of we call earth. We're vessels. Again, being a vessel. So let me preface with this. There's been there's been chitter chatter in the spiritual world that most of all right so i'm gonna take it i'm gonna I'm take you back a little bit and bring you back most of the parents that were baby boomers which were parents born from the 30s to the 60s mm -hmm. produced what were called rainbow crystalline and star c children mm -hmm. and each one is broken up by years just like gen x and gen y now this three generations of children that were born, and I want to say the last child was born, the last year was 2008. The, the baby boomers produced those, th produced, I want to say starseed or crystalline. I can't remember the order, but one produced one, which produced one, and then the last group, right? Okay. That group, the crystalline, the rainbow, and the crystal children, from all of the research that I've been reading and the things that I've been coming across, it says we picked our missions here. Go back to the year of 2020, age of Aquarius reset. Now, do mm -hmm. you remember the original age of Aquarius that was taught in school? We basically are that new generation. This is why everything is kind of falling. And if you pay attention from how the pandemic just came about out of nowhere, came, yeah. just came out of nowhere, right? forced everyone to sit still. This was the one time nobody could move. <laughs> and you were forced to look at the person you were and the person you might've been with or the people that were in your household. And okay. either you sunk or you floated. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people sunk. A lot of people sunk. Divorces skyrocketed. Abuse skyrocketed. Because the one thing you had to do is what a lot of people can't seem to is sit with yourself. This was one time God said, I'm going to sit all y'all asses down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all y'all going to listen. <laughs> a lot of right now they heard. <laughs> so if your physical isn't right, you can't get that, 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 that spiritual guidance. And mm -hmm. I tell everyone, everyone looks at Reiki. Oh, it's this, it's that. Nope. It's nothing. You can't make it. This is the one modality that does no harm. Mm -hmm. All Reiki is, is a look inward. And I just help you look inward. I shine the light for you to see inward, for you to see all the stuff that needs to be clean. It's like Karate Kid. Wash your arms. <laughs> Wash your arms. 
<laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> no, that's definitely so cool. So what is your use, like your schedule for clients? Like what does that usually look like if people are booking you as a coach? Um, it depends. So most people start off with a 90 minute session with me. Okay. Within that 90 minutes, I put you into a deep relaxation. I look at the state of your chakras. I bio scan you, see what energy I pick up on. Um, sometimes I get messages. Sometimes I don't. Every individual is different. Like I've, I've had some people who have skated right on through and I've had some people that I've had to address some deep rooted trauma. So it just all depends on what have you been holding on? What have you honestly looked at within yourself to work on and what you need to work on? So scheduling with me, um, your first session tells me a lot. It tells me if you need multiple sessions and I have like, so I have a seven week course. I have a, a three, a five and a seven week course. Mm -hmm. Depending on the amount Again, depending on what comes out in that first session, because I never know until I lay my hands on you, depending on what comes out, we either see each other for the next seven weeks or we see each other every month. Got Looking it. right now, because I've had to honestly reduce my calendar and I made a promise to myself from last year, I was literally working seven days a week last year while doing school, while being a mom, while being a wife. Yeah. It was yeah. um, I actually took Sundays off this year. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, like I'm with you. Like I want to be, I want to be that person that's on Instagram traveling, because I can do it virtually or I can do it in person. But I would love to go around the world and share it. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I'm that person that, like right now, I only have evening hours because I'm in school during the day, and then like prior to even coming on here, I literally had a session at six that ran over to seven. I had to fix dinner in between that to be here for eight. This is my yeah. life. <laughs> This no, I definitely life. know it. I definitely know it. So if people want to book you, how can they find you again? So for the Reiki, it is at www.i-m-seychelle.com. Okay, definitely. So what about the rest of your products? Um, so <sighs> I don't have any with me. The only thing that I brought was the face set. But you I, know, I'm saying about for people to purchase. How can they oh, go and buy all the amazing products? Because okay, you explain so. things so well. People need to go spend some money. That would so be nice. You know, how can they actually buy it? So for any of the beauty and health products or the supplements, surgery stuff is www.ihealsx.com. And for uh -huh. CBD is www.ihealcbd.net. Okay. Perfect, 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 perfect. Thank you so much this evening for all this information. Um, it's so much, usually what happens at the end of my meetings, I'm wondering if my energy is clouded. I tend to automatically in my brain plan out somebody's business for the next three years. Okay. Usually that happens for me. And then I end up getting off these calls and I speak to the people after and I say, well, if you do ABCF and you want to get to so many, so much further, sure. you have given me so much information mm -hmm. that I'm a little bit stuck right <laughs> now. And I know I'm tired. I know I'm tired. I've been up since 545, like literally outside since 545 this morning, mm -hmm. but I need to process and digest your business and understand your business because the level of intelligence that's come through this and your passion and understanding of your organization is phenomenal. Oh, well, thank you. Because it clearly relates to how you want to actually help people, which again is much bigger than, oh, I make this so you should buy it. You're yeah. so beyond that. And um, you're amazing. Well, thank you clearly amazing and you have so much to offer which is probably why i've been stalking you for months i knew it was there i just didn't no, know it was there. i was hoping you wouldn't bring that up i'm sorry <laughs> no but things happen when they're supposed to happen for me divine timing all the time all the time you're supposed to miss this supposed to miss this we supposed to have one conversation you can do this yes and it works and it was perfect in within this moment so yeah so nothing is ever just lost it just is what it is Right. But definitely, I feel definitely blessed to have spoken to you today and with the information that you shared and how you can come within my network, within my space 
to bring this type of healing and this type of energy, especially with my nonprofit, the Daisy Dream Project, where I will be um, doing, it's going to be honestly just pretty much overall healing center in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And what you bring to the table can be beneficial to people within my community as we need, especially because I'm talking a lot about environmental and nutritional factors that, that affect children and families and the destruction of the Black family overall and our lack of leave sustainability. Leave peanuts alone. I want to tell every Black person out there that love peanuts, leave peanuts alone. Wait a minute, peanuts are no good? Peanuts are no damn good. So Even peanut butter? It depends on how the peanut was grown, and I'm going to tell you why. I just got finished the mold section in school, how mold impacts the body, how people don't realize how much mold they have within their body. And I tell people all the time, when you think of your digestive tract, first of all, your digestive tract is 17 football fields long. Let's just start there. All of that is, yes, all of that is intricately weaved and stuffed in there. And the diameter and the size that it is, is the size it's supposed to remain. So when you're eating that piece of cake and you're eating those chips, now I'm not, don't get me wrong, because I'm a, I'm a chip and I'm a cookie person, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I do it in moderation. So if I have a bag of chips today, I'm going to eat nuts for the rest of the week. Yeah. Like everything in moderation. It's not to say you have to kill your diet 100%. You don't. You can still enjoy a lot of the things you love, but with the problem with Americans we overindulge. We like something, we latch onto it and we just keep going. Now, when you keep eating and eating and eating and you're not taking out what you're eating, remember the body takes seven years to digest a piece of meat. Think about all the meat you've consumed from a child to now and you've never cleaned out your system. Your intestines are equivalent to a sewer. It's like when you're putting vitamins and all of those supplements into a dirty gut, it's like the equivalent of dropping filtered water into a sewer. Because what happens is, depending on your diet, whether it's high in fat, whether you're getting enough water, whether you're getting enough fiber, it's not pushing all what it needs to push through the digestive tract. So what starts to happen, it starts to get stuck to the walls. And as it gets stuck to the walls, and if you eat meat, you got a parasite in you. So you got a little thing, a little worm running around in your body just gnawing away at all that debris that's stuck to your walls. I'm about to turn your stomach because this is why I want y'all to eat better. This is why I want y'all to pick better choices. This is why I want you to think about the rainbow when you go food shopping. As long as you get one color out of uh, one color out of the rainbow while you're food shopping, you will have met your nutritional daily value in all aspects. Think of the rainbow. But this is what happens. So all of this, all of this, you like that? You you got Martini Friday every Friday? After that, liquor decides to finish breaking down and sit in your gut, sit in your stomach. All those acid juices just swishing around like, whoo, I can't wait for something. Oh, she taking a vitamin. Let's get it. Nah, nah, nah. Don't even get the nutrients from the vitamin because the acid done ate it up. <laughs> OMG, this is so volatile. That's right. what's going on in your right. gut. Listen. Listen. <laughs> I think me and you are going to have a whole nother conversation outside this space. Okay. <laughs> about my overall nutrition. You know, and, and I, I I try to drink closer down the water a day. But, you know, I, 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 I eat a lot of colors on a daily basis, you know. Reduce but my But are meat. they good colors? I like my good colors. No, but I'm asking, are they good colors? Let's hope so. Okay. Let's definitely hope so. Like, you know, I like my fruits and my vegetables and my beans and my nuts. Nuts are very important, but depending on. So wait, the reason why we got into this, this conversation, what a lot of people don't know, and we've know GMO foods have been around for a while. We know the government has been messing up GMO uh, organic crops for a long time. Yes. So let's go to the soil. Because of the type of soil and depending on the temperatures and how the soil is maintained at a peanut farm, most people might see a peanut and they see the mold on the shell and they're like, oh, it's on the shell. The peanut, the legume inside is safe. No, the legume inside has now created a spore that you're ingesting and don't even know you're ingesting because you just thought it was on the shell. That mold has now permeated 
that legume. So when you now consume it, that spore now attaches within your body and creates its own sperm, its own spore, and starts sending out mold particles. Corn, another, another, another grain. Like, and I love corn. And after reading that section, I don't think I can look at another piece of corn. Wow. So because of the mold? Because of the mold. Wow. That's so gross. It is, but guess what? Knowledge is power. You make better choices. Yeah. I couldn't understand when Dr. Sebi was alive. Dr. Sebi said we couldn't eat corn. I was like, Dr. Sebi tripping. I'm eating my corn, right? <laughs> yeah, but now because of all the mold and you're ingesting that, and that's in your body. And then another thing Dr. Sebi said, which I always found weird, but it made sense. Pay attention when you excrete out. You always see a corn kernel. Yeah, it does. It's not, first of all, it doesn't go anywhere. The Maybe body five days later, you still can't go corn. The body doesn't know how to break it down. So wow. technically, it's not a true grain. We could talk for hours. Word. I'd listen. I I I I love information. I am like an information hoard. I I have this file and retrieve up here, uh -huh. and it's just like I can scan information and just file it and just recall it just like that. Like I love to read. I I my mom said as when I was young, she said anytime you know how kids get separated from their parents. She said yeah. she always knew where to look for me. They would always find me in a bookstore. Like, and it's just in me. Like, mm -hmm. this is not even, this is not even part of my library. <laughs> yeah. This is not even close. Like, my mom has two closets full of books from childhood that I still have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got it. And they Knowledge say- Knowledge is power, definitely. Very much. And our people hate to read. And I wish they would stop this nonsense. Because all of the information that they swear is being held from them is right in front of them if they will just read. People skim wow. them. You send something and you'd be like, wait a minute. And you'd be like, well, I said X, Y, and Z. And they'd be like, I ain't even read that. Well, what did you read? <laughs> they said it all the time. I didn't read that part. <laughs> <laughs> it was two sentences. What do you mean? Like, what? <laughs> make it make sense. Like, how did you not read the whole, the whole email? How did you not read the whole email? <laughs> Terrible. All the time. <laughs> this is so interesting. Yo, yo. You know what? I... Wow. Wow. So I know we initially started a conversation before about you coming on the retreat to speak. When is that again? I don't even think. October 7th through the 9th. October 7th through. That's my daughter's birthday. That's why I said I couldn't go. That's my daughter's birthday. She's the eighth. <laughs> and where is this retreat again? It's in Pennsylvania. That's not far. No, no. It's in Lakeville, Pennsylvania. We'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, because I know people would be really interested in a whole conversation with you. But if not, we can definitely get you on a BGE Gem session. I'm doing monthly uh, sessions um, with people about random information and stuff like that. Like this week, this month on the 19th, I'm doing a session on being able to do it all because individuals feel as if they don't have the power to do multiple things at once mm -hmm. and uh, what that looks like. Because people say, well, how do you have two, literally, I do have two full-time jobs, have two full-time jobs working at two different schools, as well as has Black or everything, as well as starting a nonprofit, as well as do consulting and coaching and being a mom and being a wife. How do you do all that? Well, I breathe every day and I go through one moment at a time. So I'm doing a session on that on the 19th because people just don't understand it. And some people get so caught in, all I can do is go to school. What do you mean? Like, who said that rule? That all I can do is just work this job. I want to start this business, but I can't right now because I have a job. Who told you that? <laughs> like, we get this stuff up. So that's what I'm talking about with that. And just, you know, for exactly one day. All those people that you just referenced that yep. have that saying, that goes to show they're sacral and they're solar, either closed or underacted. This is your creativity center, this is your confidence center. Again, this is groomed between the ages of like five and 12. This is like 12 to 16. How you, how you dealt with life during those ages, and that's a broad spectrum. You got to think from five to 16, 
there's a lot of milestones in between. Mm -hmm. Both little boys and little girls, each parent is pivotal in that growth. How that parent talked to them, how that parent nurtured them, how that parent interacted with them, what they learned in that those years determines what you see as an adult. So when you hear a person say, well, how do you do that? Or I don't know how to do that. Somewhere in this, th th this age group right here in these two chakras, I tell every parent that has a young child, be active and be present in your kid's life. So you're in, you're, you're a perfect person. Have you watched Euphoria? No, I don't watch it, but I've heard a lot about it. So I'm going to need you as an educator and as a parent to watch that. Because let me tell you something. I learned something. I, I learned and understood this generation more than ever. And when I tell you these are some sad, angry kids, and when you look at the parents and look at how their lifestyles you see why we're faced with what we're faced with. And it, mm. listen, educators right now are faced with a big challenge because one, you guys are underrated. You see a child just as much as a parent and you don't have the power to do what the parent is not. Yeah. And that disconnect right there. I, so I went to Catholic school K through 12. And not for nothing, my first grade teacher had no problem whopping us with a damn ruler, parent permission or not. <laughs> so the state of affairs and how children are being reared and the mm -hmm. things that have been taken away and the things they, they've been replaced with is all artificial. Mm -hmm. So we expect the kid to be like, I'm going to be honest with you. No disrespect to the LGBTQ community because I rock with them heavy, but this whole pronoun binary I identify as this I I feel like it's confusing the kids even more why you say that because this is my thing regardless of what you identify with okay you were born male or female right regardless, in western thought yes in western thought yes you were born male or female mm -hmm. you were born a human you mm -hmm. either have a male genitalia or a female genitalia Mm -hmm. To sit here and tell a kid or to sit here and say, I don't, I don't identify with either, mm -hmm. right? You don't identify with either. That's fine. That's your prerogative. But don't be upset when you're misunderstood, because if you don't identify with anything, how are you able to feel to be able to be, to be able to be social with other people? A gender, gender doesn't have anything to do with it. But the problem is, is you're taking away the feelings because every person has masculine and feminine feelings, regardless of what you identify with. And that's just the law of polarity. Agreed. So law of polarity. If you don't identify with anything, how can you identify your masculine feelings? How can you identify your feminine feelings? Because regardless of what you identify with, no matter what age you are, you still have those feelings inside of you. Mm -hmm. So to me, when you guys were just the, the acronym, that's fine because you identify to something. You ident How can you know who you are if you're not identifying to anything? That's my big confusion with this whole situation are we talking about individuals who are non-binary correct specifically well i consider myself partially very non-binary and the reason why i do is because i float between energies within the space no, yes. but ultimately i also don't get bothered when i'm when somebody calls me a sir or when somebody calls me a her or she or they or them because yeah. i'm comfortable within my space within that but if you go back to actually like native americans native americans here that were whom a lot of our of us well necessarily you your family comes from the roots of jamaica which is a little bit different but native Wait, americans most people actually there that. is no male and female in most cultures that's actually quite quite western there's quite european who actually came in and in 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 place that concept of you are a man you are a woman um that's where I really came from so we were actually all quite general we were all quite they or thems and we we're just people and we were all within our energy because again like you said we all possess masculine and feminine energy at all times okay so to give you a little bit of my background 
So my grandmother is full blown Chinese. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Grandmother's full blown Chinese. Grandfather's uh -huh. full blown Jamaican. That's just my mom's side. My dad is African. <laughs> yeah. So I get it. You understand what I'm saying? I honestly get it. And I've looked, I've honestly looked at it from all the way around. We're all human. That's, and that's how mm -hmm. I look at it. We're all human. But I think you have an understanding of yourself, right? Very much so. You have an understanding of yourself. These kids that's within this age group don't. That's where the confusion comes in at. This is why they grow up a little bit more confused. And you see a lot of the kids in the circuits that they're in because, again, they're not. How can I put this? If you don't, if you can't understand the law of polarity the, the way you do and how sure you are of yourself, you are able now later on in life to be able to make that decision because you have gone through and grown within this time, right? Mm -hmm. These children are in this time trying to make a decision when they don't even know if that's what they're going to be in five to six years. Yeah, but I don't see the confusion is going to happen if you don't talk about it at all. And that's Either what I way. want to create a conversation rather than just... Yeah, the conversation needs to happen about what it really means. And we need to educate our young people and educate our families about what that looks like and what the experiences that these young people are actually going through within that phase. Because you start really self-actualization starts as early as five years old. So at, when you're at five years old and you're being constantly told that, especially in Western thought, that since I was born with male genitalia, that, okay, you're a boy, you got to play sports, you got to like trucks, you got to do all these different things. Mm -hmm. you know, And that's not what you're into. And you rather honestly play with Barbie. It becomes, that's where the conflict comes in. That's why even within my preschool classroom, we advocate and I tell parents all the time, if your male born child, as you have indicated, comes in this program and they want to play with the tutu and dance, that's what the hell they're going to do in here and have a good goddamn time doing it. And we're not going to tell them they're wrong for doing that because there is no gender normality within this space because we're all humans, we're all people. So we don't live through what supposed gender norms are, especially under, you know, Western contexts. But if people were in a space where children and everybody was able just to exist within their self, there is no confusion because you're existing within yourself because you don't have to fit no category. Why are there categories? You shouldn't have to fit the category. You should just be able to exist and move throughout this world however you want to. And, and, that's, and that's honestly with people who are non-binary as even myself. Mm -hmm. You know, like I grew up a lot, of, a long time and I realized that I was, you know, definitely into females and everything else like that. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, I'm very masculine, but then I'm also very feminine. Mm -hmm. I look damn good in the fucking mirror. I have a great girl body, but I love my male suits. So it's all the I same thing, you know, <laughs> but it's just who I am as an individual. And we want people, it doesn't matter, even our cisgender folks and like the cisgender men who were so saying- I, You know what's funny? I had a discussion. I still don't understand what that is. What, cisgender? Yeah. Okay, cisgender is, is your, because honestly, I think a lot of people really aren't cisgender, me personally. Cisgender are people who claim to be heterosexual and clearly male or female. The simple explanation of it. Wait, say that one more time. <laughs> People who, so like, right, you identify as a female, uh -huh. right? And you're heterosexual. Mm -hmm. You're considered cisgender. So that's just another way of saying straight? Basically. The hell? See what I mean? All the confusion. We like colorful words. There's colorful words, okay? There's very <laughs> colorful words on my side of the flag. That's just words. All right, it's very right. colorful. Now no, I mind you. It. Listen, I'm gay as gay gets, okay? I was rainbow popping. In my teens and my early 20s, I was rainbow, the rainbow coalition was me. But I have to even continue being educated myself, even as a director of educational enrichment at the Bronx LGBTQIAAA plus center. Well, I have to learn I everything. Y'all done added on more letters. What? Literally. <laughs> I gotta keep up with this. I gotta keep up with the trends. It's very trendy in a way, but it ultimately seems like it. For but me, it is what... very trendy. All right. So I grew up. Now, mind you, this is about to get real interesting here. 
my childhood best friend lived next door to her since I was five years old, right? Did not find out she was in love with me until high school. Ooh. Yeah, it was one of those situations. But how I found out was so messed up because it came through a third party who I thought was being malicious. And okay. I kind of cussed the third party out defending her. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? So fast forward, like 15, 20 years later, when I'm going to get married and we're trying on bridesmaids dresses and she was like, hey, you know, I've been in love with you, right? And I'm like, yeah, want to talk about that now? Let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? Like, I've been on this. What the fuck is up? Like, yeah. when were you going to tell me? I was like, I've heard it from everyone else. When were you going to tell me? So I grew up in the era with the balls, going to the, the dances and stuff like that. And, you know, again, I guess I'm cisgender. I've always been, I always looked at it like you guys had a way to express, like you guys were very expressive. I gave you that Friend and I loved something. how mm -hmm. free and expressive you were. Fast forward, seeing as though, like I need y'all to really educate these young kids because these fools get bent out of shape. If you you say a wrong pronoun, you'd be like, well, wait a damn minute. Listen, you got to help me help you <laughs> because... <laughs> Like, I don't even know what the hell to say anymore. Now I just be like, all right, let me just not say nothing because I know my mouth and sometimes shit might fly out. You'd be like, you know what? <laughs> this went really left really quick because why are you so offended if you're not going to tell me? But it's like, again, to me, it, why can't we just keep it simple? <laughs> Yeah, no, there's, there, you know, and that's what it needs to be simplicity within it. But people, people, everybody, what's the word I'm looking for? Because I don't want to use over exaggerate, right? Because that's a very harsh word. It has a negative connotation. But people like putting so much emphasis on certain things mm -hmm. um, because it also disqualifies their level of importance for themselves and their place in the world. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that you're you're always going to be important regardless. There's so much emphasis doesn't need to go on everything all the time. But that also just comes with being stable, with being grounded, with being comfortable within who you are as an individual. Individuals who get bent off the hanger or go off into another world because of someone possibly misgendering them who has no clue what that even means, it's awkward because you have to educate like, no one, I'm sorry, this is how I, I like to call myself and just share. And then most people say, oh, okay. But then you deal with the people like, I'm not doing that. And then that's where you get that tension. And usually it's within their own families where they find that they're most misgendered. It's not usually the community at large, right? So I get to your point about why aren't people just explaining themselves is because they're still not even comfortable with themselves. And especially for our young people in between that age, because remember sex, sex uh, self-actualization starts around that five-year-old age because I believe that you have everything you really need by the time you're born to your five years old. You are established as an individual. Everything else is just cake on it. Mm -hmm. And how you build it out whatever direction you go is you, you are a person at five. And by the time you get to that person, everything that happens after that is just going to continue to mold you. And hopefully it's going to upbring you instead of dragging you back down, right? So it's like at that age, how are we supporting that movement? And some people just are not very supportive of that movement. And it's because of, like, if I hear you ask the question, like, I don't understand what that means. I can respect that more than somebody saying, well, I'm just not saying that. Not that I'm just not doing that. I'm not understanding that. That doesn't make any well, I mean, sense. There's a level of respect no? that needs to be there because, again, if this is what the person wants to be addressed as, address them as such. You know, they say it's not what you call it, it's what you answer to. So <laughs> Clearly, clearly. And it really is just that simple. But, you know, and I do get you on when you sit there and say that level of confusion. And I think of ultimately the level of confusion comes because our society is so rigid and we get so caught and what we think things are supposed to be instead of just existing in love. If we exist in love all the time, nothing matters. Exactly. Just exist in love. You know, you know, a lot of my family is very queer. A lot of my nieces and nephews are very queer. My son, and I say it all the time, he's actually quite queer himself, but mm -hmm. he, he existed in love. He came out, I was like, I like this, this day. And now he's like, I'm here all right, I still love you. So whatever you want to do, you want to do. But we gave him the space to be that person. We give our my nieces and nephews the space to be that person. All the young people that I work with, I provide a space for them to be whomever they want to be. And it doesn't matter where they end up at the end. 
I just support them in that moment. And where they are that moment, okay, well, I still love you. It doesn't matter. And this is and then that moment changes. And sometimes, you know, they're married to some man and have 15 kids later. But that's their prerogative. This is why I said healers and educators have our tasks with a big task right now because mm -hmm. we really have to raise this generation out of darkness. Yeah. This future generations out of darkness. And the only way we can do that is if we, we understand, parents especially, like, all right, in the show Euphoria, there was a scene where Jules, Jules is transgendered. Mm -hmm. Transgender, so I wanna make sure I'm saying this right. Transgender male means she turned female, right? M to F, yeah. Okay. So Jules, it, they show you certain of the kids' stories and Jules' mom took her to where she thought she was going to go get ice cream or something. Next thing you know, they're at uh, one of those alternative schools that they used back in the, uh, say, 80s, 90s when they were doing shock therapy and all of that. Oh. And one of those, she, I'm going to fix you places. Thank you. And literally, she thought she was going for a tour and not even realized the mom was dropping her off. Mm. Even when you spoke about how children aren't allowed to express themselves, especially with their preferences, I felt like Queen Sugar displayed that beautifully with Blue. Like, oh, we, yes. watched, we watched Blue play with that damn doll baby. <laughs> <laughs> and yet. <laughs> to the point where and to see how I, I never forget the episode when ralph angel was about to check the um the waiter because mm -hmm. the waiter was looking at him crazy and i'm like that is what we need we don't exactly need men demasculating the men and then wondering why you got these hard ass rough men running around out here that's most of them are undercover not to clearly because they're too scared to be out and then you have them abusing women because, again, they didn't get that nurturing. It mm -hmm. has to be a balance. Let the kids be. Like, mm -hmm. kids are the most freest, purest individuals. Everything that they learn is, every all of those bad things is learned. Yep. Is learned. Because a kid wouldn't know, a little boy wouldn't know that playing with a doll was wrong if the dad didn't get so upset. Well, who's to say it's wrong? How do you expect him, the mind, again, the mindset sometimes, because again, if you want your son to learn how to treat a woman, why not try with a baby doll? Yo, how is he going to be a father? I say this to people all the time. Oh my gosh. Oh, my thought, my child is in dramatic play, pain with a baby. Well, didn't you pay with them when they were a baby? They'd be like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, how are they going to learn these skills? That's why preschool is so important. They're learning the basic skills of survival as an adult in preschool. So we want them to be relatable. We want them to understand these things. We want them to be nurturing. We want them to, to be have empathy. We want them to care. We want them to cry. We want them to express themselves. We want them to get angry. We want to learn how to settle down. Like those are all the key things that kids learn in preschool. And especially for our Black boys. Because our black boys need it the most the because most. we're so busy saying, oh, you crying. You know, I, I grew up in a household in a place where my brother's cry was called a Sally. Even then, I was like, what do you mean he's crying? He's upset. He needs to process his feelings. And this was me because I've always been that dude. But it's just like, why do we treat them like that? Why do we not allow them to express their needs and their wants and, and what they need out of the world? Our black men need, and our black boys need to say, it's okay to cry, brother. Go ahead and cry. Give me, a, let me know when you're ready to talk about it. Let me know when you're ready. I had a kid throw a for 23 minutes the other day in the hallway. 23 minutes. And I, he's kicking and throwing himself all over the floor. And I kept on checking in every couple of minutes. I said, you ready yet? Let me know when you're ready. I'm here for you whenever you are ready. Then he got up, he said, I'm ready. And we went and talked about his whole problem. And it was done after that. But that is okay. But he learned. I said, next time you gotta do all that. We can just talk. I tell my I tell my nephew, I have one nephew, he just has anger. He was born with anger problems, I swear. He's been throwing things down the steps since he's been born. And yeah. now he's at a point where he's breaking stuff. So I pulled him aside and I said, Listen, this is not how we express ourselves. You have to verbalize how you feel. Mm -hmm. Use that mouth that you know how to use so nicely for other things and tell me how you feel. But breaking things is not. And Again, if parents stop letting 
social media and these tablets and these phones babysit their kids. Yeah, it's all about communication because the social emotional competence of our community overall has to do with how we're teaching our toddlers and our preschoolers. I'm telling you that zero to five, if they can get it and understand how to express themselves in a safe space and how they feel in a safe space, you're better off. You are 1000 better percent off. You know, as much as I might get frustrated with my teenager that I have, my 17 year old that I want to choke half the time and it's, and, but they can sit down and like, this is how I feel and why. And I'm like, damn it, <laughs> you know, but it, it, it's better for me to know those things, even as they must be misguided or mis, you know, that's necessarily the, the base of what things should really be, but that's their truth. And we got to be able to allow them to express that and now, to see, experience that. It's funny because I have growing up in a Caribbean household, we weren't allowed to have a voice. No, nope. so we were not allowed to have a voice. You speak when spoken to. Act, do as I say, not as I do. The most contradictory damn line I've ever heard. I hate that statement. I hate it. Like what? So much. Like you could do it, but if I do it, I'm wrong. Where that makes that doesn't sense. make any sense. You better lead by example, homie. Like it doesn't make any sense. But again, it's about breaking these generational curses because that's yeah. what they are. They've been ingrained so long, generationally down. It takes one person in the family to say this ain't right. I was her. Because I'm the black sheep. Believe it or not, I'm the black sheep. I'm the one everybody to hate, but they love to call me when they in problems. <laughs> what do you what do I do with this? <laughs> now, now I'm a good person, huh? <laughs> now you now I matter. <laughs> like, come on. But I I I'm, I was the one to this day. They I'm still talked about our family functions. Oh, if Sush come in here, that that yeah, because Sush is gonna say what everybody's been thinking. Why are we sitting here dancing around the damn issue? Let's just get to the root of the problem. Okay, see, that's what me and you have our life in common. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, be... I don't know why you got a problem, though. They're like, what? Yeah, I'm I'm not her. Why you feel like that? I yeah, will, I, guess I, will... I don't got time for being around the bush. It's like, yo, put it out on the table and let's deal with this now. Like, I'm not going to embarrass you because I hate to be embarrassed, but trust me, I will be the one to call some things out and be like, it's out. What are we going to do? <laughs> 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 what are we going to do now? All right, I did it definitely let's talk about it yo so seriously we've been talking for like an hour and 18 minutes now. wow yeah yo, this is actually my longest interview it's actually been quite amazing because we started talking about your lovely business and all you have to do and now we've talked about so much stuff about healing and everything else this has been quite incredible listen this quite was healing incredible. Yourself. this was a healing session whether you know it or not Definitely, definitely, because somebody's going to hear a lot of the stuff that we spoke about even within ourselves because you learned a little bit and I learned a little bit I did right that, and listen, it's all about growth. So you're gonna walk I away from this walk away with something that I didn't know before. That was a fruitful conversation for me. Isn't that a win-win? Because I'm a win-win because I got a lot out of it. But this has definitely been an amazing conversation. And I truly appreciate your time this evening. Like um, people can tune in. It's gonna be on a YouTube channel, Black Girl Everything. Okay. Um, so you can share it and I'll send it out I via email so people can check it out. But before we leave, please again give everybody your social media, your website. And how did you get in contact with you? Because again, you still are quite brilliant. Well, thank you. So if you want some Reiki, you want some healing, you need some crystals, you want to get your life back, you felt like you lost that glow, www.i-m-a-m-seychelles.com. You want some beauty products, you're going to get some surgery, you want some supplements, you want some teas www.ihillsx.com and for CBD, I www.ihillcbd.net. All right, wonderful. So, Seychelle, thank you so much. I can't wait to go to the island with you as soon as I get my jet. <laughs> Gotta get the jet first. <laughs> awesome. We need hot towels and all of that. <laughs> yeah, I can see somebody now. I don't know, they're gonna probably bring us water because you know, alkaline water because we can't drink any water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need more yeast in my body. Gosh. <laughs> Water, but this has been great. Thank you so juices, much. Juices, teas, all, all works the same. Jesus. All right. You could put a cap full of alcohol in one of your juices. That'd be your cheat day. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. It's it was a pleasure. <laughs> No, nah, it definitely was. Thank you so much for your time. See, this has definitely been a blast. Until we talk again.
All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye.